Christian. Welcome, friends, to the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. At the third stroke, it will be three. It's my story with a guy. Two. Like a cattle in the wind. One. We call this feature No Dignity. The Christian O'Connell Show. Gold 104.3. Hey, good morning, Wednesday morning. I hope you're well. It's the Christian O'Connell Show on Gold. Good morning, Jackie boy. I am well. How are you? What? <laughs> you know, it's they a- say some radio people just actually don't <laughs> listen at all. I just said, I said, good morning. I am well. How are you? You said you've been too What do you got, you auto reply on? Are you on holiday? I'm away from my desk until the 15th of August. <laughs> I am well. How are you? I am human. I have been researching responses. We'll come back to him in a minute. Patsy, are you, okay? are you okay? I'm brilliant, thank are you. Are you well? I am, very well. Oh, are you? Uh, Jack, I tell you, he's really well at the oh, moment. I am. It's technically not, though. It's Jack Post. I fear this is because you are home alone. You're starting to break down day <laughs> by short day. Short-circuiting. We made it to Wednesday. He's got another two and a half weeks home alone. But I cooked for myself yesterday. So oh. what did you make? Chicken, beef? I made a soup. I'm starving this morning. Because I'm you know, absolutely we, I don't starving. respect soup. It's just like a... An easy little quick thing. Mm. Yeah, but I, I'm proud of myself for going to the shops, getting the ingredients, coming home, chopping them up. I'm not proud of you. Soup. Just make something better. No, no, no. no. It was tasty. Chicken's quicker. No. Soup <laughs> takes time. It did take time, and I'm starving now. What did you make? What kind of soup? <laughs> it's a chicken vegetable soup oh, in, in a bone broth. sounds so boring. It's not yum. In a bone broth. Oh, that's, that's no like hours. <laughs> Bone broth. Yeah, so it's healthy for you. Very, it is very good, very good for you. Mm. But trouble is, you're starving now. Yeah, Your body's so like, hungry. okay, that was starter, <laughs> right? In France, they call that French onion soup. They had that to start. I forgot to even get some bread, like a dipping oh, bread. No. Jack, for yeah. heaven's oh, sake! No, and no. I couldn't dip the crumpets. Oh, That's the only no. other thing why I've got not? in the house. Why not dip the crumpets? <laughs> a crumpet in a soup? Yes. Mm. Why not? Be like Heston Blumenthal. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have some of the Dunkin's because that's that's the food bit. <laughs> that's the, the rest of it bulk. is a drink. <laughs> it's just a drink with some bits in. It didn't have noodles as well. I had some noodles, yeah. Oh, God, it's oh. a sloppy old meal, isn't it, Soup? <laughs> Don't you find you like wiping your chin a lot of the time? Especially with a beard. It gets yes, sort it of must oh, get oh, caught up in there. But actually, the joy of if you're home alone, you can just make all that mess down the front. It doesn't matter. Leave it. Yeah. Just <laughs> leave I it I can there. leave that for two weeks. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> great. So you're starving this morning? I'm very hungry. Right, yesterday, um, uh, my daughter uh, is 18 this mm. Sunday, right? We've actually had a big argument yesterday, my wife and I, with her, because she's 18 on Sunday. She's like, well, I'm an adult. Mm. And technically, she is. Yeah. Mm. Even though she's also a child. You know, do you remember being 18? You, I thought I was a grown-up. You look back now, you were just... You were just a child who's 18. Especially turning 18 on a weekend, people would wait to the stroke of midnight so yeah. they could get into bars. Yeah. So she's been doing this big thing, I'm an adult, and so she's booked in to get a tattoo next oh, week. Already? Oh, wow. mm. I, I, I did not know <laughs> about this. It's a big this. red love heart. Suddenly she came up to me and said, hey, you know, you, uh, I was talking about how I want to get a tattoo, and I was like, oh, God, I thought that was just a conversation. Mm. I went, yeah. <laughs> she goes, I've booked in next week, and I went, oh, God. <laughs> I said, does mum know about this? No, I thought I was going to tell you both now. You book, you book, where will the tattoo be? How big would it be? And then you've got a tattoo. Yeah. I've got a tattoo, right? But we're... We're sort of further down our life. No, I got mine when I was nineteen, and oh no, <laughs> yeah. I was hoping to have no. some. Yes, you know, I went I got I was it, and I got mine, on, mine on a whim as well. Did you? Yeah. Ah, maybe I can use your story. Do you regret it? I do. Yes. <laughs> and finally, finally, you can come in useful. Oh, Jack, this is what I need. Send me around a case study. <laughs> oh yes, because I keep trying to explain to her. Like, look, okay, I understand you want to get a tattoo. You are, you're mm. eighteen. It's up to you now they're your choices yep. and ultimately mm. your mistakes but how you feel now at 18 you are not going to feel like this at 21 or even a year's time do you remember what you thought about life at 18 because you know next to nothing that's why my <laughs> the tattoo i got which is two birds on my lower back has Classy. no no <laughs> that me- is actually yeah. worse than a tramp stamp <laughs> it is it is it has absolutely no meaning and that's the number one question oh, people ask God. when you have a tattoo it's like what does yeah, it mean and yeah. all I did was I was 19 and I picked it out of a book no you I just should flip do through it's it it's quite big isn't it it's it goes big. right yeah. across your back <laughs> it's massive you got it in Thailand take a photo yeah. of my back and take it home today and she won't get I a will. tattoo <laughs> next <laughs> week then, look, if you want to get something okay it needs to really small, mean something small. but small and where you can cover it up because I said you know you're going to choose a line of work hopefully that means something to you people might make a view or judgment on that and if you're later on the war it doesn't matter you're into who you are and what you are but at 18 you don't want to be shutting down doors too early anyway then i saw the sizes thing and i was like and it's 
at the moment it's like mm. four inches and I went it needs to oh. be smaller it needs to be maybe four <laughs> centimeters or three <laughs> centimeters please I guarantee because I tell you what happen is in about five years time you go why didn't you try and stop me <laughs> yeah, yeah. why didn't you try and stop me you <laughs> said you were an adult you said guy like, made a cat art that <laughs> cat art guy is going to be the one giving me life advice it's very hard to understand <laughs> good luck to her all right is there anyone else who got a tattoo when they were younger maybe a teenager who actually regrets it i need more case studies like jack the christian o'connell show podcast so my eldest daughter hits 18 this sunday really excited right everyone in the house is at fever pitch this week it's amazing and it was not so amazing yesterday the conversation when she said technically i'm going to be an adult you and mum need to understand this now i'm thinking this is going somewhere so i booked in to get a tattoo oh god please <laughs> and so so put it somewhere where you can cover it so that when you're going out to the big wild world and trying to have job interviews and you're still new in the world people aren't making judgments about you and so she wants to get this tattoo which if she wants to get a tattoo and it means something to her I'm okay with it, but it's just got to be small and discreet. Mm -hmm. And then she said, I'm going to get loads more. I said, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. But telling house doesn't know. You don't know either. Because don't you, you man, remember when you were 18, those thoughts you have? That's like everything is, you think you know everything. Mm. You're so 100% on everything. There's no uncertainty or maybe. You're just, I'm going to do this. This is how I'm going to be in the world. This is how the world's going to be around me. And you changed, don't you? By 20, 25, 30, you've got a tattoo. Those tattoos you regret. That's, I got them when I was 19. And the reason that I got them on such a whim, and they don't mean anything to me. And is where were you? Were you in Bali? I was in Thailand. Classy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Aussies travel real well. This is the other thing. I didn't know at the time when you get a tattoo you're meant to keep it out of the sun yeah, you for like two weeks yes yeah. i got on the second day of being in thailand <laughs> <laughs> you know the next day i was going out to the beach and islands and stuff so i wasn't allowed to keep it in this allowed to be in the sun <laughs> i thought i was going to get heaps of tattoos at that yeah. age so i thought it won't really matter that this doesn't mean anything to me and then i stopped after one and now the question i get whenever i'm at the pool or at the beach is what do those mean to you and i have nothing to say about it yeah and that's not you is it it's not me. No. I have two birds on my back. It's not me. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to me. Caitlin, our producer, right? A brilliant, really smart producer, right? She's awesome. She just told us that she was going to get one with the word serendipity down the side of her ankle because it was her favourite word. Impressive the writing. <laughs> and these are the thoughts that we have at 19, don't we? She luckily dodged a bullet, though. Somehow was so smart at 18 not to do that. It was almost serendipitous. <laughs> <laughs> You should get that tattoo now. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's say schools. Michaela, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? I'm good, Michaela. So did you get a tattoo when you were younger, mate? Yeah, I'm now 25, but I was, it was a couple of years ago. I was 21 at the time. Um, I was on annual leave from work, and I went, well, oh, I'll get a tattoo. I now have a little coffee cup on my wrist that my family dissed me for, and now I was like, oh, yeah, I love it, I love it, and I hate it now. <laughs> Can I ask, why did you get the coffee cup? Do you just love coffee? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I drink it every morning. Uh, my partner can't deal with me and without that's, a cup that's of coffee. That's great. That's fine. That's great. <laughs> Don't need to put it firmly <laughs> on the body, do you? Lots of coffee. people love coffee. It's not like a to-do list, is it? Go, oh, yeah, I must get myself another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, my family didn't let doesn't let me live it down and if they heard this, they would never let me down <laughs> with how, it. <laughs> how big is the coffee cup? A couple of centimetres? Um, yeah, I'd say about a couple, a couple of centimetres, about five mm. to six centimetres. Just a macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, thank you very much for your call. Well, thank you. Uh, Lewis, good morning. Chris, hi. Hello. <laughs> this is a man with a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? And uh, Lewis, tell us about your tattoo. Well, I got the... Uh the thing you get in the 90s when I was 16 I got a tribal armband oh are you in the red hot chilli peppers uh, I wish <laughs> yeah um, it was pretty uh, disappointing to me mum when I was 16 I thought I, I, wow. I thought I was a man I just started a, a trade as a cabinet maker and uh, yeah really regret it now to be honest and how old are you now Lewis you don't sound that old now uh, I'm 41 so. Right. And it, how has it aged, that tribal band? Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it's still, I cover it up most top, most of the time. Um, yeah, I'd like to get it done over, but I just can't justify paying someone 200 bucks an hour to, um, to go over it. I'd rather buy some camping or 
fishing gear, really. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The choices in life. It all comes down to choices. I could get this tribal band looking good, or I can get some camping gear from Anaconda. Yeah, you just, you just wear a long T-shirt, you'll, and you'll laugh, yeah. you laugh. Know, so. <laughs> what you want to do is maybe see if they could turn the tattoo into some camping gear. Yeah, because then so the fishing lures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lewis, thank you very much for coming. Have a good day. Nice sweat. Take it easy. Uh, Julia, good morning. She regrets this tattoo so much she doesn't want to talk about it. The Christian O'Connell Show Podcast. Good morning, Julia. Christian, uh, I'm in a rush at the moment, can't call him. I don't have the excuse of being 18, but I got a regrettable tattoo in my early 20s. Now my late 30s paying the price for it, getting it lasered off. The process has taken over a year. It's not like on the TV shows, and it has cost a thousand times more oh. than the original <laughs> ink. And it, it actually really hurts. Um, happy to send uh, pictures as a, uh, a warning to Ruby. Please do, Jules. <laughs> and I would say to your daughter, Ruby, think long and hard before you ink. Uh, Mel, who works on the show, she's got these amazing tattoos, but mm. she said what well, a, a thing that she mm. did before she got one is she got like the, uh, the image that she wanted to have tattooed and she put it uh, on, on a wall so she could see it every day for a year. And if she stood in a year's time, felt the same about it, this has a real meaning to me, I'll go and get it done. That, uh, though, is the thought process of an, of an adult. adult who's <laughs> got a fully grown brain. But what I might suggest, though, is actually saying, OK, right, I'll come with you, mm. get it done, book it for, say, four weeks' time, do what Mel did, look at it on your wall every day, and then in four weeks' time, you still want to get it done, we'll get it booked in, move it back four weeks, go and get it done. That's a good idea. Mm. Just four weeks. Mm. But didn't she already book it in? Wasn't she telling you that it's already booked for yeah, next I Wednesday? Know, it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's teenagers, they, you raise them, they get more powerful than you. They're overwhelming. They're just overwhelming. It's just relentless. All right, so let's find out what are you up to right now? We simply want to know the answer to the question, what are you doing right now? While the show is chuntering on in the background, what are you up to? I know that most of the people I listen to the show, you've got stuff going on. If you're not getting out of bed or thinking about getting out of bed or doom scrolling, you're up to stuff right now. Some of you are already at work or finishing work. So we just want to know, what are you up to right now while we're doing the show on 9414-1043? Uh, one of the calls we get during the next 10 minutes will give you a pair of tickets. Go to Village Cinemas, Gold Class, Double Pass. If you are going to the cinema, go and see the Baz Luhrmann movie, Elvis. It is a brilliant, brilliant movie. This is the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. John Manicamp, Jack and Diane, God 104.3, Christian O'Connell Show at 6.52. Coming up to your next hour, your chance to... Uh, Call us up and ask for the Billy Joel tickets and give me the Billy. Could be sold out now at the MCG in December, but you can win your tickets every day this week. Not just any tickets. Guaranteed in the first five rows. Get in. Uh, that's in the next hour. Right now, though, we just want to know on 94141043, what are you up to right now? You just call us up, jump on the phones, 94141043, and tell us what are you up to right now? Dean. Yes, Christian. Yes, Dean. Dean, what's going on with you, my friend? What have you uh, got going on? Uh, I'm heading to Urawa to drop a horse off, then I'm going across the stall to drop two off there, and then back to Kilmore. So is this your job? You are uh, like an Uber driver for uh, horses? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. They don't pay you, though. They don't right. pay. So <laughs> is this what you do every single day during the week? You just drive around Victoria or anywhere dropping off horses? Yeah, around to, uh, up to Queensland, up to Sydney, go to the races. Pretty good job. So are these the racing horses, the thoroughbreds? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you've got a really and, precious cargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for some of them, are worth probably millions of dollars. Time um, you had some of them. And what do you do? It must be just hours and hours of lonely driving, though, every day. Oh, I got the radio. Right I got you on, Christian, and then... That's what like... I meant, lonely driving. <laughs> if this is your company, <laughs> <laughs> if it's just <laughs> us, you know, God help you, man. God help you. <laughs> The, but you're on the radio until I drop out of signal and then I've got to change to another station, which is a bit of a bummer. So do you listen to any audio books or podcasts? I'm just fascinated by all those hours of driving around Australia. Nah, just the radio. It's all good. All right, all right Dean, we'll have to send you a prize. Thank you very much for calling us up, mate. Have a safe trip today. No worries. Thank you. See ya. All right. Uh, Richo, good morning. Good morning, Christian. How are you going? I'm good. What are you up to right now? We're carting fertiliser off ships down at uh, Corio on North Shore in Geelong. <laughs> and where are you taking it to? Oh, he's gone. Richo. 
No, oh, Richard's gone. We've lost Richard. Let's go to Megan. Good morning, Megan. Hello. Hey, Christian. Hey, Megan. Welcome to the show. What are you up to right now? Oh my gosh, I'm pulling off my yellow Crocs on my shoe on my feet, and I'm popping on some gumboots. Guess where I'm going? Well, this is uh, a rousing talk for some of our listeners. We have a lot of croc fetish listeners that tune in round about now for croc talk at five to seven on a Wednesday. What, what's going on? What are you doing in your gumboots? I'm going to take some photos. I'm an amateur photographer, and um, this is my day off work. And while I'm watching all the tradies go to work this morning, I'm heading down the beach, and I'm a sunset and a sunrise chaser. Oh, beautiful. And what beach are you at today? I'm heading down to a... I'm actually here now. That's the Red Toe. Um, actually, the place called Cameron's Bite. Right, where is that then? Just off Sorrento, just coming back towards Melbourne, but um, from Sorrento, Victoria. Right. So what, near um, Blair Gowrie, or are you the other side? Correct, that's right. Ah, I think I know where you are. I bet that'd be beautiful. So what time will sunrise be? Soon? Uh, just after, so I think, half past seven, but I'm here just before, I'm on first light, so I'm walking down there now, so I'm in pitch black at the moment. I love this. So you, on your day off, this is what brings you joy. You'll get up super early and you'll drive somewhere and just sit and wait for the sun to rise. Yep. Absolutely beautiful. And um, it's had a bit of a shower, but it's stopped now. So I'm hoping to get some beautiful clouds. So oh, this is great. Us, we love, um, we get excited over the clouds. And, um, and so, where can people see your photos? Do you share them online or anything? You're on Instagram? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I'm just an amateur, but I'd love people to follow. Yeah, I'll give you a follow. What is your Instagram name? Well, I believe the kids call at it Handle. Megzies, yeah, at Megzies Photography. Megzies Photography. Yeah. Right, I'll jump on that now. We'll give you a follow. And we'll follow you from the show account as well, okay? That's two extra followers you've got. Thank you. And um, it's just a beautiful outlet. I, I do palliative care nursing, and it's just a beautiful outlet for me. Oh, I bet that is. Well, thank you for what you do. Thank you. All right, enjoy the sunrise this morning, all right? It's looking good, guys. <laughs> All right, Megan, thank you very much for giving us a call. We've got Richo's back. He's Richo's back. I was worried about that fertiliser. He's holding down at too long. You're still there, Richo. You dropped yeah, off. Yeah, got you, mate. Yeah, sorry. I dropped me party pull on the phone and it cut it out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't worry about it. We never leave a quarter down. <laughs> don't drop it in no. the fertiliser. It's so bloody early to be having a party pie, isn't it? <laughs> but then I'm not hauling tons of fertiliser. I'm just sat my it's ass under, in. The party pie's under me foot at the moment. I can't <laughs> <laughs> and Tiri, I like me truck doesn't work, so I'll find it when it's daylight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be a nice slack later on with a bit of dust and dirt on it, won't it? No, we're just staring at the... We're down the wharf here in Geelong, uh, waiting to get loaded with fertiliser to transfer them around the North Shore in Geelong. So. Right on. All right, Richard, glad we got you back. Have a good day. Enjoy that party Thanks, pie later on. Good on you, mate. See, See ya. ya. See ya. Well, on a brighter note... You're listening to the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. We need to get into a big topic today about the one of the greatest games to ever play, Uno. Love Forget Uno. about Monopoly. <laughs> you can destroy a family a lot quicker. <laughs> you can tear a family apart real quick with Uno. So when we had our family holiday two weeks ago, the great thing was uh, is uh, every day we we're playing Uno together, right? And this has been like that since the kids were a lot younger, but even now, almost 18 and almost 16, they still love playing Uno. We love playing Uno until you're told to pick up eight or 12. <laughs> and then we hate our family members grinning and laughing at us when they all go one, two, three. <laughs> So I shared a photo the other day of uh, my daughter right after she'd been made to pick up 12. And I'm afraid to say that this little upstart was flipping the bird. Yeah. <laughs> to me, father, <laughs> taking the photo. And I'm the guy that laid down the oh, another four. Pick up 12. <laughs> Hate to see it, kidder, but pick up 12. And some people take when they're playing games really badly. I got a great email the other day from someone who saw it and said, Christian, my brother, uh, we had a huge fallout when my brother took going to jail in Monopoly really badly. He was uh, he was 10. He refused all offers of food and drink, spat and swore at mum and dad when they came near him, and then smeared the wall with his own feces. Like he was really in jail. Yeah. We never played Monopoly. <laughs> wow. Whereas Uno is the game of kings and queens. Keep your walls clean. Yes. So uh, a lot of people were saying, though, the big thing people were talking about was that I was playing a version of Uno, I didn't know, that is actually against the rules. You're not meant to. It's called stacking, where you're meant to go. Everyone knows if you played Uno, you got the plus four card for pick up four. 
But you can't then put another plus four on top of that. Mm. And as I did, another plus four on top of that. I didn't go pick up 12. It's called stacking. I didn't realise it's technically an illegal move. I'm shocked to know that, that in the Me actual too. rules of Uno, you're not allowed to stack because it's the best part of the game. The best part. <laughs> Putting down a draw four and then oh. making and then going double draw four. Yes. And then the absolute dizzying heights of a yes. third draw yeah. four. It's great because the person that has to pick up 12, they're fuming. And it's an individual game, but everybody else has come together to destroy this person. Especially before that, they were down to their last card or two. And it's not they're going to go all the way back to the start. So I wanted this morning, does anyone else... I presume we all play with the stacks rule, don't I we? I think yeah, everybody. Totally. I'll, I'll be shocked if we find anyone who's playing yeah. by the ha- the actual rules of Uno. Yeah, I just thought these were the rules. So is anyone else playing in a different version the actual rules? Do we all play stacks? We all go pick up eight, pick up twelve when we play the great Uno. The other thing is that we found out is there, there is actually a Uno World Championships, which we'll tell you about <laughs> next, with a fifty thousand dollar prize. Hi, I'm Pete Hellier, and before we get on with the podcast, today's survey question is. Name an article of clothing you never iron. Hear the answer with Family Feud, the podcast, where some of Australia's funniest people try to outwit each other. You've got to imagine that the survey, often the answer's been yelled out of a car window. <laughs> Join me alongside Nazim Hussain, Michelle Laurie, Mary Watts, and many more. Play along and follow Family Feud, the podcast, on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you're listening to this podcast. The Christian O'Connell Show podcast. We're talking about one of the greatest card games you can play with family and friends, Uno. I just presumed it was the rules to play the stack version where if someone lays down the pick up four plus four and you've got one, you put another one on top of that, the next person is going to pick up eight. But if they've got a plus four, they put that down, then the person's picking up 12. Yeah. You should also be able to stack plus twos. Draw two. can go on a draw two. Yeah. Uh, By the way, I've just been reading about the history of uh, Uno. It was originally developed just as an idea by a uh, hairdresser, uh, a barber in a tiny little suburb in Ohio in 1971. He just did it. It was trying to uh, work out a game to play with family and friends. So it's not Italian. No, no, I know. (laughs) Go figure. All right. So we were just asking this morning, does everyone else play the stacks rule where you go pick up uh, four, pick up eight, pick up 12? Apparently it's not in the rules, but I just presume that's how we all play because it's crueler and therefore funnier. <laughs> um, ben, good morning. Good morning, guys. How you going? Yeah, yeah we're good. good. So, do you play the stacks rule? Yes, I definitely do. Right, so you play where it's plus four, plus eight, plus twelve. Yes. So, I'm going to say, in high school, we had a Star Wars Uno deck and uh, there was a Mace Windu card in it and that was a plus ten and we doubled the deck, so it's normal Uno deck in it, as well as the Star Wars one. And it went round the group twice, and one of the guys got a plus 36. Oh, <laughs> you hate to see it, but love to see it. Plus 36. There's hardly enough cards left in the yes. deck. Oh, dick. Well, well, we doubled the deck, but we pretty much just all just went mental, and then <laughs> it got everywhere and nothing. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm happy to say that we're probably the only breakfast show in Australia that will have a story involving Mace Windu on today's yeah. show. So uh, thank you, Ben, for that. We'll give you a prize for uh, bringing back the name that hasn't been said in about 10 years. Mace Windu! Beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Shout out Mace Windu. Where is he now? Uh, ben, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for your call, mate. No worries. Thanks, Josh. Bye. Chris, good morning. Yeah, morning, team. Yeah, so... um. Yeah, we used to do the stacking game uh, during lockdown. It was the go-to sort of game, we know. Absolutely. And um, we started stacking fours and then started stacking twos on top of fours. Oh, I love that. Um, so it was basically an all-in, but it led to too many fights. So we've actually reverted back <laughs> to the rules because um, everyone either throws uh, throws their cards in the air and storms off. Um, and it can, add to, yeah, it can lead to quite a very... Especially during lockdown, a very yeah, ten, uh, very stressful period within the household. So we've all agreed that we're all going to um, play by the rules. The family it's can't. Not as fun. The family it's can't hack the stack. No, <laughs> no, exactly. So um, yeah, it's much more civilized now. So right, uh, yeah. Chris. Thank you very much, Shikoma. Have a good day. Okay, thanks, mate. I was happy with that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> God bless. At the stack. Uh, coming soon to Channel Seven. <laughs> here we go. Here, Tyrone. G'day, how are you guys? No, we're good. And so are you stacking when you play Uno, Tyrone? Absolutely not. You'd, uh, you'd be kicked out of the house if you did that at my house. You can't hack the stack. You can't, do, you, can't, you, can't, you can't stack. So 
growing up, I had a grandfather who um, was an avid poker player. And um, when my brother and I used to go around, we used to play Uno with him. And he would play strictly to the rules. And um, he would actually he would actually do the points and everything. What? And if we, yeah, there's a full point system that you're meant to do. Um, it's how many cards you got left in your hand and each the wild card. And that pay 50 points. And then um, any other picture card is 20 points, and every other number part card is just Old the people point. really know how to kill fun, yeah. don't they? <laughs> I bet Neil Mitchell plays like that as well. Uh, top their, uh, up their grandchildren. Granddad probably won all your pocket money as well, being yeah, an avid poker player. Did. <laughs> it was actually whether we could go to bed, uh, stay up late or not, but we always used to end up going to bed early. Um, <laughs> but then I used to go play with friends. And they used to play the stack rule, and I, I used to no, 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 you can't play like that. What, what's the, that's that's not the rules. Do you know what? And there are people wild. in life who really are sticklers for yeah. reading that inside of the lid. Oh, I go, hang on, struggling. hang on, before we start, guys, let's just uh, let's see what the rule says here. I hate those people. Just start playing the game. Add your own rules. He used, used to pull out that big piece of paper that used to fold yes, out and read the rules. In there. That should be in the beer. I yeah. always bin it straight away. Go, why are they still putting these in? Burn it. The only reason why I know about this is because I actually have to read those rules to my partner because she cracks it. If we play it, if we play it my way, she's just not happy about it. Uh, what do you mean you can't put a two on a four? You pick up six now. Tyrone, you got to start stuck yeah. in. Get some spice yes. in your life. Yes. Throw those rules right. away. Matt, Matt, rules all the time. Rules make games fun, guys. Come on. <laughs> you sound like your granddad. <laughs> He's the reason I'm the way I am. <laughs> Thanks for your call, Tyrone. Very funny. Okay, Send your prize. Thanks, guys. The Christian O'Connell Show Podcast. Late to the party. Late to the party, the home of all your brilliant emails. You can email me about anything you want. Nothing we talk about ever left uh, is completely dead. You can pick it up whenever you want. Christian at christianoconnell.com.au. Uh, these emails today, then, are all to do with the uh, thing we were talking about the other day. Animals that have chased you. Uh, Christian M for magpies. Swooped to me every spring when I was a kid. Yeah, my mother-in-law. This is going to be our first spring since she moved here in Christmas. And uh, she's got she's, uh, she's not got a car. She's got a mobility scooter. So she's terrified about the spring because everyone keeps saying, the on a mobility, they yeah. will go for you. <laughs> Elderly, you're moving slowly on that thing. You're a sitting target. So the other day I saw her, she was Googling what she could do to protect herself. She needs to make one of those funny helmets with those the helmets? cable ties. Yes. That's yes. some sort of Russian hazard yeah. with the spike <laughs> on top. I've even seen ice cream containers on a head with cable ties coming out. Mm. What, what is it about the cable ties? I what guess do they, they think do? they're little spikes and make so ah, they don't yeah, swoop. Yeah. M for magpies swooped to me every spring when I was a kid. They would see me coming from a mile away and start singing out to their mates to join them. <laughs> <laughs> Look who it is! Come Look on. who it is! <laughs> My mum made me wear an empty ice cream tub on my hair to protect me. I could never fully understand why I had no friends growing up. Uh, that's from uh, the, that's what the magpies were seeing. It's no mates. Uh, Annie, thank you very much for that. Christian, I was in Kruger Park in South Africa, and I stumbled across a group of elephants. Well, I mean, in a, in a, in a national, national park, park, that's their home. In Africa. They're stumbling across you. You're not, whoa, 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 what are these guys doing here? Elephants in an African national park. African elephants. Uh, there were some babies, and Daddy Elephant wasn't too happy about me being so close, so he charged at us. Mm. So I did what any normal person would do in that situation. I took a photo, then ran like hell. <laughs> the photo is now proudly displayed on my wall. He sent me a photo of, of, of this, right? It's clearly mm. a rampaging, angry <laughs> Look at that elephant. Oh my god. Uh, this comes from Adam. Christian, long time listener, first time communicator. Oh, why so formal, Adam? Um, was listening on the way to work the other day, and you were talking about wombats. And uh, you were talking about, you were laughing at the guy who said it moved very quickly. Do you remember the guy who was chased around his yeah, own taxi? That's right. And we said, You can't be chased, they're really slow. Christian, they are not slow. They run in short bursts very quickly. I was out for a crunchy, uh, country run a few years ago when I saw a white wombat. I stopped to speak to a little chap and started filming him. He was probably around five metres away from me. And I said to him, hey, little fella, what are you doing? What are you doing? He charged at me and knocked me over and my mobile out of my hand. I swear, guys, it was like a bolt of lightning. These things could shift. <laughs> You don't believe me, I have footage of it and audio on my Facebook page, but I can't work out how to transfer it to you. Come and get it if you need it. Adam. 
<laughs> Adam, we send our people. They're on the way to your Facebook page right now. We will get hold of the audio. We need this Sapruda footage of how fast these white wombats can move. This is the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. All right, you want to come and see Billy Joel live? The tickets are now completely sold out. Over 70,000 people can be coming all over Australia. See Billy Joel for one night only, the only show he is doing in Australia this year. It's right here in Melbourne at the MCG, under the lights, Saturday night on December the 10th. You can win your way there. Not just any seats, these are guaranteed to be in the first five rows. And then on Friday, everyone who's won a pair of tickets with us will get the chance to get that upgraded. Already amazing seats, first five rows to be right in the front row of Billy Joel at the MCG. So just call us up, say, give me the Billy. You come on air and just say why you want those tickets. 94141043. All right, give me the Billy. Let's see what we got first of all today. Kelly, good morning. Good morning. Christian, give me the Billy, please. Well, it's very polite asking. <laughs> Kelly, tell us about why you deserve the Billy tickets. Well, for starters, I think I'd probably be the youngest there. I'm 22. Um, so I'd love to fly my mum down from Darwin. Um, she's a huge fan also and sort of well, forced me into listening to him growing up. So I've got no choice now. Um, but I'd just love to take her and I just think it'd be an unreal opportunity. Oh, what a lovely thing to do for your mum. All right, Kelly, strong case. It might be you. Stay there. Thank you. That's all right. Uh, Roxy, good morning, Roxy. Hi, Christian. Now, Roxy, you sound like uh, you're... Uh, are you on school holidays or are you back to school this week? I'm back to school this week. And how were your school holidays? Did you do anything good? Yeah, they were all right. I all just right. stayed at home most of the time, so... Oh, that's a bit boring, isn't it? And, uh, <laughs> Roxy, uh, are you a Billy Joel fan? Who are these tickets for? Well, these tickets are for my mum. I think she really deserves them because she works so hard for me and my sister. She drives us to school every morning and then she comes home from work and then she's just an amazing mum and I think she deserves a night out. Oh, my word. Roxy, 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 I'm going to give you the tickets for your mum. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. What a lovely, sweet little angel you are. You are a credit to your mum. What What a big heart you've got, Roxy. Thank you so much. Oh, that's lo- I love how you, you appreciate. Know, really, oh, I love how much your mum means to you. That's amazing. Thank you. Now, Ro- who's that crying about? Is that is that, is that, uh, is that old mama? That's my mum. <laughs> oh, do you reckon she'll take you as well? No, I think she's going to take someone else. Oh dear, oh dear. That's mum's, isn't it? Always looking out for another yep. one. <laughs> oh, well, listen, Roxy, you've done an amazing thing. It sounds like... Should we chat to your mum? Can I chat to your mum? Yeah, sure. Yeah, all right, stick my mum. Hi, Christian. Hey, what a lovely daughter you've got. <laughs> oh, I was just getting ready for work and I came out and she said she'd got through. I'd been trying the last couple of mornings. I'm oh. so proud of her. I'm just wrapped. I'm a really big fan. Oh, that's great. Well, listen, I hope you have a lovely time at Billy Joel. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Pleasure. I'm just absolutely wrapped. Thanks, Christian. Good. Enjoy the gig in December. Thank you. Well, on a brighter note, you're listening to the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. Thank you very much. Every single day, we're blown away by the passion you have. Not just you'd love to go to see Billy Joel, but this real passion about what he means to you, and more importantly, what his music means to you. And a lovely little Roxy there winning tickets for her mum. I got this email yesterday, and again, so email, so many like this, but this one really stuck out uh, from Courtney Smith Christian. My mum always tells a story with pride. A few years ago, about 10 years ago, I had a brain surgery. After a long time in hospital and rehab, mum had finally come to collect me and take me home. It's a really long drive back out to... Uh, Country Victoria, the surgery was for my epilepsy and that meant that part of my front temporal lobe had to be removed. This is the part that remembers words and names. I couldn't remember the names of my family and friends or even basic words. You know, that thing that you sit on with legs was me trying to think of a chair. As we began to drive, the severity of the memory loss became very apparent to mum, who I know was trying her best not to let me see uh, see that she was crying. She told me how well my cat had been while I was away. I said, oh good, I missed her. What was her name? After a strange silence in the car, we we listened to gold years ago and uh, Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire came on. Without missing a beat, I sang along to every single word of the song. Word from word, start to finish. Couldn't remember the name of my cat, family, friends, mum, dad, nothing. But I knew every single word of the song. And with that, my mum knew that everything was going to be okay. Courtney, this is such a lovely story. I will find you a pair of tickets for you and your mum. It's a great story. Thank you. The Christian O'Connell Show podcast. Busy show today. I feel so bad. We haven't even had time to really share the uh, findings that we found out about Captain Birdseye. How for three crazy years, from 98 to 2001, they went with a beardless captain. 
to give him more of a younger edge and then had to go back to the old bearded fella. And he took a year off, you said, yeah. as well. Sacked in the 70s for a year. They thought they didn't need the captain, but no, they, you need the captain. There's a whole Netflix series in there about the captain. <laughs> Promise you tomorrow, we'll clear the decks. Even if we have to drop uh, songs, well, we won't drop the ad brace, obviously, we're not crazy. Uh, we'll drop songs to bring you a deep dive, a deep dive into Captain Birdseye. Anyway, Patsy, what's been going on with you out west? <laughs> you know, it amazes me how the love god, he usually has a sleep on the on the armchair about seven at night, falls asleep. What, every night? Every night. It's a bad habit of his. Is that pre-dinner or post-dinner? It, either or, usually post Usually, I'm not post. surprised some of that stodge that Patsy oh, says. No. Put anyone into he just pretends sort. to be asleep. <laughs> 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 just to not eat it. <laughs> but he'll fall asleep with the remote control in his hand, and it's usually some stupid show that he's watching on Netflix that Audrey and I aren't into. But even though he's asleep, it's like his body <laughs> is guarding it. Clamps down it's on like it. It's like it's rigor mortis. Like, a, like a brave, beautiful lion. <laughs> With his paw on a bone. <laughs> so you sort of creep over to steal the remote <laughs> off him. Crawl, c- c- commando crawl. <laughs> Don't stir. Don't stir him. But he just, he's fast asleep and the head's like back and his mouth's open, but he's still got like this vice grip on the remote. So last night. From these cold, dead <laughs> hands. <laughs> it's like Arthur pulling the sword out of the stone. Yes. <laughs> it was that bad last night. I kid you not. I had to put my foot, <laughs> I did, on the side of the chair to sort what, of gain. it out? So, yeah, to gain some traction and like pull it back. Anyway, it came back and kind of popped out of his hands. But then he classically says, oh, I, was, oh, I was watching that. I was just, uh, I was just resting my eyes. <laughs> Watching the Christian O'Connell Show podcast. Our search continues for your weakest claim to fame. There's no business like show business. My auntie has a packet of cigarettes that belong to Leonardo DiCaprio. My uncle worked at the blacksmith that made the prop swords for the Braveheart movie. I played laser tag with Dave Chappelle. I shared an Uber pool with Zac Efron shoes in Byron Bay. Christian O'Connell's weakest claim to fame. <laughs> you listen to this show, you're hanging out with a fast crowd, folks. Fast crowd. <laughs> Those were all amazing. All right, what have you got for us then? Weakest claim to fame. Have you got another Zac Efron shoe story out there? Susie. Hi, Christian. How are you? I'm good, Susie. Welcome to the Weakest Claim to Fame. What have you got for us? I've got a story about Johnny Farnham many years ago before he became famous for Whispering Jack. And he used to work in a restaurant where my mother used to work. Oh, not work, but sorry, he did a floor show there. And he sang Sadie the Cleaning Lady. And anyway, after my mother had finished work, she said to um, him, would you like a lift back to the Civic Hotel, which was in Canberra back then? Oh, and he yeah. said, oh, that would be lovely. And anyway, so we go out to our car, which was a charger. I don't know if you remember <laughs> yes, the old charger. the old chargers, yeah. Yeah. We, we put our fingers out like the hay charger thing and anyway my, we put the bucket seats forward and he hopped in the middle between my sister and myself and up Northbourne <laughs> Avenue in Canberra we drove and Johnny Farden's just sweating you know just sitting there like a little kid no seatbelt in the middle and anyway we dropped him off and he gave us a kiss goodbye and all I remember was this peppery sweaty taste <laughs> <laughs> it was fabulous so that was my week has claimed to fame. What a lovely story you told there. You took us there, Susie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that was great. And it's good to get a fancy one. You know, we always think it's part of the DNA of this feature, isn't it? Every a second week one. at least. Yeah, we need a good one. That's a great one, especially with that peppery aftertaste yeah. of a fancy <laughs> oh, kiss. Oh, that peppery aftertaste. What, what did he like been it? eating? Maybe a peppery uh, steak or... Well, it was a Chinese restaurant. It was very much oh. like an old speakeasy back then. There was he probably a gaming room out the back. <laughs> yeah, I think so. A bit of garlic and, you know, so forth mm, going on there. Pepper, too. stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> Right. I definitely think so, yes, for sure. Now, I'm glad we cleared that up at the end. Uh, Susie, <laughs> thank you very much, you call. Thank you, Christian. Bye. Bye. Uh, Vanessa. Hi. Good morning, guys. Nessie, what have you got for us? Uh, my grandfather invented the Fredo Frog. <gasps> oh, wow. Damn it, that wow. is huge. <laughs> yes. You've got a genius in the family. <laughs> yes. How did he come so up with that? When he was 14, he worked at Mac Robinson's. Um, and it was going to be a, a mouse, 
Um, but Pop turned around and said, well, the housewives, they're scared of mice, so why don't we make it a frog? And his boss said, well, you make the mould of the frog and we'll do it. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Wow. That sounds so... Well, the housewives. <laughs> yep. Light me a cheroot. <laughs> Let me put up a chair at this table, boys. Well, the housewives. <laughs> i tell you what nobody's thought of. A chocolate frog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is incredible. And did he, uh, was he a one ear wonder? Did he create anything else as genius? No, just, just the photo frog. <laughs> Once you come up with you something can like that, that. You can live off that. You can't you? Yeah. We dream of having a one hit like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, thank you very much for your story. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Chris, good morning, Chris. Good morning. Chris, you got a uh, weakest claim to fame. What's yours? I have a Billy Joel one. Oh, yeah, off you go. Um, we went to Billy Joel 1988 at Kuyong, and we were up in the stands in row two, close to the stage area, and all the people on the floor started pointing up at us, and we couldn't work out why. And then we discovered we were sitting right behind Kylie Minogue and Jason Donovan, and um, halfway through the concert, Billy Joel came around, and he was singing right in front of us. What?